What do you think that we can do better for season two? Uh, I think having more guests more consistently. We've had a lot of guests. We have, yeah, but I think like starting it with that in mind, that's okay. not something we could have improved upon realistically for season one. But I mean, just I think starting it without that as our primary thing and then switching to that, I think staying with that being our like kind of front burner yeah. format would be really nice. Yeah, I'd agree. I And a different types of guests, mm -hmm. not necessarily, just more diverse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think like... We kind of talked a big game early on about like having experts on <laughs> yeah. if we can if we can swing it and yeah. and reaching out to people you know it would be nice to have authors yeah I think yeah. like have, like reaching out to certain authors which I plan to do mm. just people from other communities would be nice because we've mostly been talking to people within our community yep which is great that we have people who are like opinionated and willing to talk and conversationally adept enough to mm. help us do this. Yeah. That has felt good, but a diversity of voices would be would be uh, ideal for me. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I agree with that. Yeah. I also want to try to be a better interviewer. Yeah. I think, yeah. You're pretty good at that, man. Well, thanks. I think that I often have the next question in my head too early, and then okay. I just stick to it. Mm. And then, like, additional information doesn't impact what I say next. Mm. I should just respond conversationally rather than interrogatively and that maybe you know that'll I mean? come when we start to have more um people that are like out of our comfort zone you know like or out of our social circle like mm. i don't know when it just feels more severe like when we did the gunger episode and it felt like we haven't like met this guy in this context before yeah and it wasn't like if we were to interview like trevor and we know trevor and we would talk to trevor outside a gig and it can be a little bit different maybe it would be something that would just happen organically and quickly. Yeah. Cause I think for me that, that need is glaring when, when I'm out of my element in a on mic situation in any capacity, I start to see all of like those types of shortcomings in myself very, very clearly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Personally, that's something I want to get better at. Yeah. yeah. When the pressure's on and I've actually found that that pressure is easier to respond to in person. Mm -hmm. Like we've done Friday night folk episodes here in this studio and yeah. it's just, it's easier to have a back and forth with somebody when you're like with them, looking them in the eyes, responding <laughs> yeah. to their body language and you know, their, the, the energy in the room rather than the silence that you have to avoid on a zoom call. Yeah. <laughs> I know it feels like being on the radio, like you're the listener and mm. the guest when you're on a zoom call. Yeah. The dead air is so there. Yeah. But it's also not live. Right. So it doesn't matter in that way. It's weird. But yeah. I really like in person too because you can read the person's body below like their neck. <laughs> so you can kind of <laughs> like you can tell like if you ask a question or try to go down a certain path and their body language changes, mm -hmm. you might be able to like kind of conclude, oh, I shouldn't have gone down. Like, not that it would be offensive, but, you know, just realize, oh, they're not necessarily as comfortable going into this aspect of this topic as they might be if we went this way. Yeah. Whereas on Zoom, someone like, someone's body language changed. They might be responding to like a message that just popped up on yeah. their screen or something. <laughs> yeah. Like you have no idea what's going on on their end. Yeah. So, I mean, that should be a goal. It's also a little bit uncomfortable to think about like the future of interviewing people in person, yeah. um, given that there, uh, might be another lockdown in the future. Who knows? I don't want to like plan around that necessarily. So but it would also be harder if we started to go wider with our guest pool to, um, yeah. always do it in to, person. Uh, do it in person. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we'll do a little bit of each. Do you have, I know you, you've, you haven't listened back to any episodes, <laughs> but just, in terms of you, uh, how you remember the conversations as they happened, is there sort of a, an era or a phase or a, a streak of episodes that stands out to you from last season as like we really had it nailed for a little while? I've always really, really, I've said it probably many times, but I've always really enjoyed the ones where we go more, we can go pretty abstract or we can get pretty philosophical with it and connect it back to more of a concrete social science -y or self-care oriented thing yeah. as opposed to when we start at a self-care or social scientific point and work our way out. Right. They just feel more professional to me when we do that. Like it feels like we're starting both with a really good 
kind of estimate of our strengths, but also we're keeping it on enough of a tether that like, you know, we're, we're doing content. We're not shooting the shit. I felt good about, I think everything we've done. I mean, again, without listening back, but there haven't been any that I've wrapped up or I've been like, Oh, we, we screwed the pooch on that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely can feel um, like I love the objective truth one. Mm-hmm. Granted that was almost completely philosophical. I don't know that we tied that back to anything, but, but it was really, I felt like it was a strength too. Like I've always maintained that we do that anyway. Mm -hmm. Neither of us has any PhD in psychology or like social work or anything where we would be qualified to talk about those things. But we have thought and read for our entire lives about things like objective truth. So like in a way we're as qualified as anyone short of writing a treatise. Yeah. And that's what I kind of mean about like the kind, like I, I feel like the kinds of guests that we could reach out to in that kind of quest for diversity Mm -hmm would be the kinds of guests who can be philosophical and speak to the self-care elements a little yeah. bit. Which is why I'm saying, like, a lot of authors, especially, like, some of the books that I've been reading recently, probably would be those kinds of people that would kind of follow us into some rabbit holes and yeah. engage with us conversationally about, like, that weird out there stuff. Yeah. But also <laughs> have some words of wisdom to share, and I think that would be yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, because that's something that I've always been kind of fascinated by with those types of subjects is I've I've never thought that we're unique for wanting to go to those places. I think it's just sometimes the type of thing that people don't always realize you can do recreationally. Yeah, Like you can poke at these subjects without having like you know, some crazy academic qualifications to like justify your being there. And uh, that's what's something I really enjoy about like the conversations we have on this. Mm-hmm is kind of just having them and having them with people who I've never had them with before. For all I know, they're all having them independently in their own lives. But, you know, there have been certain people that we've interviewed that like, I've never had that conversation with them before. And it's really cool to kind of be like, oh shit, like all of these lights still light up, even when I'm not with the people that are like my quote unquote, like, you know, my like cigarette talk people. like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, it's like we've talked about before in terms of going back to school and feeling hesitant and feeling like you need to earn the right to have these like academic stances or, or, or take an academic position on a philosophical problem. Yeah. Or even just to be like academically critical or philosophically critical of a concept. Mm. You feel like you need the academic requisite. Yeah in order to say yes to that moment. But I think it is just about like saying yes to the moment. Yeah. So if you invite somebody else into that moment and you're all able to say yes to it, you can have differing opinions. You can have a diverse background in your ability to speak to such a question or Mm. your qualifications to criticize or, or to be critical of a certain field or of a certain topic. But I think I've found a lot of value in just inviting people into the conversation, saying yes to the conversation, not Mm. caring where it goes, especially when it's like, it's philosophy, nothing matters. (laughs) (laughs) But but it's saying, saying, kind of saying no to verdict, but saying yes to the debate. Yeah, we've done that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I enjoy that a lot though. Like that's one of my favorite things in life. Mm -hmm. let alone on mic, like just, I don't know. We were just talking about it off mic, but the fact that like every philosopher who's ever written has been absolutely certain on some level about what they're writing that like, nope, this is the world. Like, this is how it is. This is what truth is. This is what reality is. And then somebody reads their book and says, nope. And they write their own book and they're absolutely certain. Not always for their whole life, but I mean, you know, it takes real conviction to put something like that onto paper or to just walk around with that flag planted being like, this is my philosophy. And we've still never arrived at anything close to a verdict. Like you read the Tao Te Ching and we're still freaked out about the same exact social ailments that everybody goes on Tumblr and writes about now. <laughs> and yet every one of these philosophers was right. Yeah. Maybe they were. I don't know. Maybe. Like, something is missing. And I really, I like that. Like it really excites me to have those kinds of conversations with people and to try to poke at it from every possible angle and find out about new angles. And 
the idea of reaching a verdict almost cheapens it. Mm -hmm. I love the feeling of thinking you've reached a verdict and then logging off and being like, oh shit, like, what about the, like, that's just cool. <laughs> it just keeps the ball rolling. And uh, that's something that I'm really glad that we kind of, <laughs> kind of like agreed on early on that we're not going to necessarily try to cage that too much. Like mm -hmm. we should try to be responsible and try to be professional and not let these things just totally meander. But um, at the same time, not pressure ourselves to lay down some law at the end of each yeah. episode. I agree, but I also like the meandering. Oh, I do yeah. too. I just mean like for the sake of like recording it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. I think that we, I mean, again, we don't air episodes in order of when we recorded them necessarily. Yeah. Sometimes it depends on like if a guest has something to promote, then we'll we'll wait for that. Mm. So it's hard to say that we like hit a certain streak per se, mm. but I feel like I got really comfortable around mid spring, which makes mm. sense because mid spring, I'm comfortable with everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that spring tends to trick me into thinking that everything is going really really well. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, I think like around the time when we were doing the cross discipline conversations. Mm -hmm. Like that's when I was having kind of the most epiphanies maybe. Yeah. And just was very in tune with, with the self-improvement end mm -hmm. of these conversations and, and where that was leading to me, where that was leading me to. But yeah, like basically from there up until, up until objective truth. And then by happenstance, that was around the time that I like, we owe an explanation to the listeners that we never started a blog. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you were trying to finish up school. Yeah. And I had just decided to quit my job <laughs> and was yeah. really into the idea of not doing extra work. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we never did start a blog. Um, no. I don't know if we ever will. <laughs> Now I still that, think it's we, a good idea. I do too. But it is, yeah, it's a bit of leg work. But it's extra work. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I have a few blogs, like yeah. mostly written. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just never got around to finishing. Yeah. And and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll, we'll put them up. Um, but it's also, I mean, this whole operation, 95% of it is you editing these yeah, I don't want to do more. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's like we don't have a staff. Like, <laughs> yeah. We can't be like sitting around when we're off mic. Like, what shall I do today? It's like yeah. so much of for you. Mm -hmm. What has to be done is making these things actually presentable to the public. Yeah. So I'm in a different, fairly privileged position in, in terms of the <laughs> blog. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't even have to hear yourself talk. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm following your lead on the blog, dude. And I completely sympathize. <laughs> And have your back there. <laughs> <laughs> I like the work. It, it is like, for, for me, it's a really easy way to experience flow state. Yeah. Because it's literally just listening back to conversations and cutting out silences and, and stuff like that. It's very repetitive, mm. but feels just productive enough so mm. that I can get into that sort of meditative Zen place. Mm. And so like, it's, it's work that I enjoy. Yeah. And for that reason, it is work that I am trying to do more of, mm -hmm. uh, freelancing for others, which is, you know, it gets mon monotonous, but it is what it is. Yeah. I'd love to talk about what we have going on in our extracurricular lives this fall. Yeah. If we have anything going on. <laughs> yeah. God, yeah, I don't even know. It's just dawning on me that um, like I'm, I'm still just so slowly processing that the everything I've been doing for the last year is no longer happening. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. weird. I'm actually going through a lot of that internally, just thinking about what the hell is fall going to be. Well, sh maybe sh we we should first talk about um, how it feels to be done with school. Oh, it feels good, dude. Do you feel more qualified to be on this podcast now? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, in a way I do, um, not in like the sense that the degree has given me any more authority on yeah. anything, but the subjects that I was learning about and the, uh, the type of thinking, the type of reflections, a lot of the writing, like there were a lot of skills that I had to really sharpen back up 
that I hadn't paid any attention to for so much of my 20s really so far. I just, sure. when I was doing them back when I was younger, I didn't care. I didn't understand that like, this isn't necessarily how the world is. It was just, you know, like you're in grade school and that's your whole life. That's how you learn the world. And uh, I don't know. So yeah, I, I came into this from a place of not necessarily regarding those skills as skills. I think I just thought they were kind of obligatory things you had to do if you wanted mm -hmm. the piece of paper or whatever. And over the course of getting that degree and which started right around probably the time that these were starting to come out, give or take, or we started taping or some sort of way they coincided, but it was about a year. It was like right when the pandemic started, probably two weeks after it started, I think I started doing this and um, I was doing social psych. So I learned a lot about like group dynamics and the way people socialize and the way people kind of use cognition to, form ideas and philosophies and stuff. So I really, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like it informed a lot of things that we had talked about abstractly or there were, there were even concepts that like you would bring from notes or from research that would pop up in my classes sometimes later on, which was cool. And like, yeah, the podcast and school actually intersected a lot. And yeah, I do feel like they almost both qualified me for each other. Yeah. A lot more than I would have expected. And Partially because I didn't really know what social psych was when I started. I kind of just, I can't overstate how much of a fuck it that decision was. It was just a like, this seems cool. I have nothing else going on that will occupy this much of my time. And I would like to have a college degree and wrap this up. Was part of it what you could apply transferred credits to? Um, a little bit, but I mean, my I basically did my gen eds and stuff. So I had kind of... A blank slate when I started. Okay. Wow. So it was kind of sweet. Like I had done all of my, like, basically I had, a, I got an associates during the first six months of COVID and then I got the bachelor's for the, like the other eight months or whatever it was. Yeah. And that was just a nice way that that worked out. Mm. Cause I sort of got to learn how to do school again, doing my gen eds. And then I got to apply that to like subjects that actually were very, very pertinent to the world and to the stuff we were talking about. So. Yeah, so I, I was awesome. very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. yeah so I don't good. know if I've said this on mic before. I actually have a minor in psychology. I didn't um, even know that until we started doing these. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's not something that you brag about. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool, though. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people have it. And I wonder how many of those people happened into it in the same way that I did, because I started out as an education major. Okay. And when you do education, you have to take a lot of psychology classes, mm -hmm. developmental psych, child psych, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So when I decided not to be a teacher, I was like, well, I have taken all these psych classes that mm -hmm. I can apply to a psych minor and got pretty into it. I actually like thought about double majoring, but it mm -hmm. would have been way too much work. Yeah. And <laughs> so then I, I had completed it. I completed the requirements for the psych minor, mm. dropped out, went back. When I went back, you're subjected to whatever changes the department has made to certain requirements and, and requisites within the department. Yeah. So they had changed the requirements for having a psych minor, which was good because they were really loose at the time <laughs> that I completed it. <laughs> And so I no longer had a psych minor when I went back, but then I, I just went to the psychology chair and was like, Hey, I had this done. I no longer have it done. Can you sign this paper? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, let's do it. He was really enthusiastic and also very just passive yeah. about it. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Yeah. I think he loved that I was there and wanted the credential, Yeah, but he also didn't care because a psych minor it's not like it earns you a pass yeah. into the field of psychology. Yeah, it's like major doesn't earn you a pass. Like no, it's no, crazy it how either. few things earn you a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Very few things actually earn you that pass. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed abnormal psych a lot. Mm -hmm. I never took social psych, I don't think. It's cool as hell, man. Yeah. You would love that shit. And I almost went the other way. I started... Um, all of this started because I took a sociology class like the first week of COVID. Just there was an online self-paced sociology class. And I was like, I'll do this. I need something to like get into here. Yeah. And I just never knew really what it was beyond just the conceptual like definition of it. So I got into all the 
basically it was like this just kept falling ass backwards into stuff. Like I took that and was like, Oh my God, this is what sociology is like. This is so cool. I love this. This is what I do alone. Like this is just yeah. how I think. And then I thought I liked sociology and I thought I wanted to be a sociology major and I tried everything to become one and then they didn't have a sociology program. So I just was like, what the hell? Social psych. Who doesn't have a sociology program? <laughs> this place, man. So, <laughs> I mean, at least not for, not for what I wanted to do, which was like okay. the online. Oh, I thing. see. Like, like they didn't have it accelerated. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was able to get social psych and the cursory, like very well mined article that I read about it was like, oh, okay, that sounds pretty cool. Like I'll do that. Cause it was just a psych degree with that concentration. So, I mean, it was like pretty broad anyway. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up realizing that's what I, <laughs> that was what I thought sociology was. <laughs> like when you get deeper into sociology, I realized, oh, I'm not as interested in these broader concepts. I'm interested in why people do these things. Yeah. And that's, and I was like, this is sick. Now I like this. And then throughout that, I kind of found my way back to like the abnormal psych way a little bit where mm -hmm. I didn't care at all in the beginning about that. Like, I don't know. It didn't intrigue me, but then I started getting so into that too. So mm. it's just a cool field, man. Like there's so many different perspectives to go at. It's like from like, you can go completely like the clinical end or you can go more of the societal end and developmental or cognitive. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think I've, I mostly studied the clinical end, not the mm. clinical end. Well, cause I never studied like how to be a therapist or anything like that. You yeah. Know? So I don't mean clinical in that sense, but definitely clinical in like the diagnostic sense. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I came more from that end of it and less from the sociological end of it. Mm. That would have been good stuff to learn. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Going back this fall. Yep. What are we doing? Are we releasing stuff? Are we playing shows? Are we living in, in fear? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there's so much that is undecided. I don't know if there's going to be like a crazy lockdown, like you mentioned. It's, it's like yeah, hard to really play that. So personally, I haven't been booking shows beyond like you know things that are either streamed or things that are pretty like mm -hmm. like I like this person. I'm going to try to do this to support them, or I'm going to like. I'm going to say in three weeks, I think the world is still going to be what it is. So I'm going to do that. Like, mm -hmm. but yeah, I have been, I've been having a lot of trouble planning. But. Yeah. I've been enjoying being a recording artist. Yeah. 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 And I think that I had a hard time wrapping my head around that when COVID first started, I didn't want to do the live streams and stuff when it first started, but yeah, I am kind of in this headspace right now. I'm not seeking out gigs. Yeah. Um, more power to you if you feel safe doing it and you are doing it and mm -hmm. you're like back earning a living doing it. Great. But I haven't been seeking them out. I'm, I've said yes to a few engagements, but I'm not, you know, people are asking me. Yeah. But I've really been enjoying getting into the studio headspace again mm -hmm. for undisclosed reasons. I just didn't have studio access and my ability to record stuff and actually kind of be in that creative space for a lot of last year. And so I didn't have necessarily the resources to feel the way that I do now and to be experimenting and just getting into that like mad scientist space yeah. the way that I am right now. And so like being a recording artist, meaning I'm just recording and seeing where stuff goes. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and I, I like that. And I, I haven't been doing enough of that. I don't think for the, for the past, for like 10 years now. Yeah. I just, I, you know, have been writing songs and going out and performing them and saying that I'm going to release music and I never do mm -hmm. because once I do start recording, I get these very perfectionist standards. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think a big part of that has been alleviated now, maybe not, but <laughs> I hope so because I've been getting a lot more experimental and because it's, it's when I used to record, I used to go, well, this is what's in my head. How do I make that real? Yep. And then when what you do doesn't sound like what's in your head, you throw a fit over it and <laughs> yeah. you just scrap it and you, yeah. <laughs> you become a diva about it, yeah. which is okay. Yeah. But for a long time, I, I found a way around that, which was, well, Let's just layer stuff and get experimental mm -hmm. and it'll sound different. And that's, that's okay. And then I stopped doing that because I start, I started playing more stripped down music. Mm -hmm. 
So when that didn't sound the way that I wanted it to, I'd just be like, well, I, I don't want to add anything to this. This just doesn't sound right. And I yeah. can't make it sound how it sounds in my head. So I'm back in the experimental, let's just layer stuff and let's just try stuff out until it sounds similar enough mm -hmm. to the original conception of it, but turn it on its head a little bit. Yeah. And so anyway, this is all just to say that like I've been experimenting in the studio a lot. I've been recording a lot more music. Don't know when any of it will be released. I can say that the Grand Honey album will be out in October. Nice. If you and I can both get all the work done on <laughs> yeah. it by then, which I think and we're I on, saying, we're like, on like, track oh, to Okay, do. like that's coming out. And then I remember like, oh, I'm mixing that. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, oh, I could, I could actually change that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Significant amount of control over that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe we'll do a conversation with the other, uh, bandmates mm. who maybe we'll do a, a call with them or something and talk about sort of the collaborative elements of this, of this album or yeah, I guess how it came together. Cause it's been a real weird journey <laughs> putting, <laughs> putting this record together remotely. And I guess we'll get to that if we, if, and when we do talk about it, but so what else has been going on? Just a lot of recording, a lot of, I'm feeling inspired to push myself with different types of music and stuff, um, with less genre specific music, I guess you could say. Mm. And I'm accepting freelance work. Yeah. That's all I've got. Do you have something specific to plug? I feel like we don't, I'm asking this because I feel like we don't really do this for ourselves. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't know if I do. I mean, like I'm doing stuff, but I just, I don't know if it's pluggable. Okay. It's weird. Like it's similar to the, um, the studio, like recording artist mindset where I'm just, I've been really kind of focusing on all this stuff and all these approaches that I've never really given myself the opportunity to pursue. Mm -hmm. And it's been really nice. And I just don't feel like I'm done with it. Mm. Even though the world has changed since I kind of found myself in that corner. It's like, there's this part of me that's like, no, this is actually good. This is a very healthy kind of like, I don't know. Like I just never explored this consciously. And uh, so there's been a lot of different things like that, that I'm realizing like, oh, I want to do all of these things. Yeah. And if I don't have shin splints tomorrow, I'm going to try to <laughs> run a half marathon in a little bit and see if that can happen. Cause running a marathon, running the Boston marathon has always been a dream and, mm -hmm. I just have really bad knees. Yeah. And I told myself by September 1st, if I'm good to go, then I'm going to do one. Wow. And if I'm not, then I'm going to figure out why the hell not this time. And You're going to do it. a half marathon. Yeah. Yeah. Just to, I figured like, you know, you pick the dream and then you temper it a little bit when it's something that like ligaments are in charge of. And uh, I don't know, I'm going to do that, but it's not a plug, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, but I've really been liking, I've neglected those parts of myself for so long and I've never really understood the importance of maintaining them, but I, I don't, I don't know. I try not to really talk about it much beyond just mm -hmm. trying to remember, like to keep myself pumped up about it. But, well, it, you know, it doesn't have to be a plug. I feel, I, I'm just saying, I don't feel like we give ourselves the opportunity to talk about something that we're not learning from. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like. And, and ordinarily we might be plugging shows that we're playing, but there haven't been shows yeah. since we started this. So, um, but I, I just, you know, wanted to give us an opportunity to say like, what are we actually doing that we, we, maybe we haven't learned from it yet, Yeah. but just like, what are we doing for us? Yeah. You know, and not just in a sort of self care, self growth way, but also to, what are we indulging in? Yeah. You know? And it's it's not like we never talk about that kind of stuff, but that would be a fun question to ask guests and stuff at the end. And what are you of, indulging in? Like maybe in addition to their plugs, be like, "What are you indulging in these yeah. days?" Yeah, you got to ask it in your radio voice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what you mean when you say my radio voice. I don't I know. You so did it one voices. time. Like I don't even remember why. <laughs> we probably were just talking about it. we should develop like personas or voices or maybe we were talking about like Wolfman Jack or something like that. But okay. we you just did one and it was like a perfect like 
you're flipping through the stations at two in the morning, driving home from something, and that DJ comes on. It was awesome. And was it the like low and raspy, or or soft and mellow? You did them both, and oh. <laughs> low and raspy. I was like, that absolutely has to be <laughs> something. <laughs> I think we talked about doing an entire um, taping like that Mm -hmm. and just not changing and not acknowledging it. And it would be kind of weird after a while. It'd be good. I'd have to be in the right space for, I'm, I've had too much coffee today to, (laughs) to do it, I think, but, (laughs) and also I'm not giving it out for free. You know, (laughs) you want to hire me as a voice actor? I'll, I'll take the work, but you know, we would do a live show, no cameras, (laughs) <laughs> and then we'd come out real husky and dulcet and it'd be good. Uh, in college, I I figured out that I could do the movie announcer voice. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, sort of like, <clears throat> in a world. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, all you, you can. Get. That's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good, though. Mm-hmm.